the internet's most viral Asian news articles that you don't want to miss. Andrew, first up, we've got kids in China crying over intense academic pressure placed on them by their parents. Man, this one's going to hit you in the feels. <laughs> Ah, I don't know what it is, man. This happened in China, but how come it went so viral globally, man? People of academic centric immigrant parents everywhere could relate to this. It's so visceral, man. I'm gonna tell you this growing up, oftentimes academics and emotions are very much tied together. Now, um, the little girl who was making a case to her father, I'm not gonna lie, man. She gave a great speech. She made a very convincing case on why she should be able to play. She's like, I'm a good girl every day. I do all the right things, then. I'm gonna tell you this. I don't know what she's gonna be when she grows up, but she could be a very successful lawyer or at least an actress, cause those tears were real. I do think specifically in the country of China, they could do a better job of like having fun along with the work. You know what I mean? Like for example, Japan and Korea, I think they do a lot of work too, but I think they bring the funnel meter maybe like halfway there. It's definitely not like America where it's like, it's maybe even more fun than work in school, but like, it can't be like this guys. We gotta fix the balance because especially in China, Andrew, it compounds because I heard they have a saying where it's like, yeah, when the family only have one child, all the pressure is on a child. But when a family have multiple children, all the pressure is on the parents. I got hope for the future though. I think each generation, the parents do a better job of balancing it out. At least these kids get to experience some internet fame for their sadness. I don't know, Andrew, is it worth it? Andrew, at the church we went to growing up, I would say the baseline parent, the softest parent out of everybody was like maybe four out of 10. But man, you saw some people that were 10 out of 10, Andrew. We knew a kid who had to do homework for two hours a day and then piano and cello for another five hours a day. That was seven hours total. And I remember their mom was always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you get 24 hours in a day, okay? So that's only two hours plus five, that's seven. You still have 17. That's not that much, you lazy boy. Oh, this boy is over here trying to teach his sister math. <laughs> hysterical man i do feel bad i feel bad but it's getting better let me know if you guys think all these videos going viral globally and within china might actually change the culture whether we're talking about the dad crying because the son failed the test or the brother can't teach the sister math or this hyper articulate tianjin girl convincing her dad to let her play video games for another hour it could Andrew, the second news story coming viral out of the Asian American community, Andrew, is basically our fancy white restaurants in New York City discriminatory against Asian patrons, either seating them upstairs or in the secondary room outside of view from the mainstream crowd. Hey, uh, this doesn't look like the main room. Everybody's Asian here. What the hell? If you're a foodie in New York City, you have to know about this restaurant, one if by land, two if by sea. Let's cut to the chase. One if by land, two if by sea racially discriminates against non-white people, particularly Asians. The only people coming up to sit and eat on the second floor were Asian people. As you can see in this photo from Yelp, the first floor has a lot of big windows, natural lighting, candle chandeliers, and mosaics, high ceilings, good ambiance. This is the second floor, the mezzanine, taken straight from their website. You can see that it's very different, much darker. There are two windows here. Those are the only two windows on the second floor. There's no piano here. There's no bar. It's just not as nice to dine in objectively compared to the first floor. This one's from 10 months ago. You will see that a lot of Asian people have detailed discriminatory behavior from this establishment. Look at this, 11 months ago. This one's from a year ago, I think. Everyone who was Asian was seated outside and everyone seated inside were Caucasians. Furthermore, I highly doubt it was a coincidence. There were four tables of Asians. Same here. Someone else's review. 
There were six tables of Asians packed in the corner of the balcony area. What is this, the Asian corner? Now I'm gonna show you what it looked like on the second floor when we dined. Oh man, I'm gonna be honest. She did make a good case. Like this was a good internet call out versus other ones that I've seen that didn't have as much evidence. Now, she did save me $200, David, because I was definitely planning on eating there. Psych. Honestly, I will say this. From This has happened before, by the way, to me and Andrew, mm -hmm. before at some establishments that are like $100 to $200 per person. I don't want to name any names. I will name Servos right there. For sure, they did it to us. That was racist. Um, I will say this. Like, sometimes white people, I don't want to say it's fully racial. It could be, but they're very protective of their vibe mainstream crowd. So if somebody doesn't look like they fit in there, they will try to put them off to the side, not in the window, yeah. try to isolate them like in the outdoor seating. But I don't want to say this is just true for restaurants, David. This is true for any elite or exclusive club, whether you're talking about a nightclub, a country club, or even Harvard University. Guys, they just think Asians are not cool so that they don't fit in. I mean, they're probably thinking, they're looking at the reservations being like, oh, wow. Yeah, what are they probably gonna order water and the beef Wellington? They're gonna take 30 pictures. That's wrong. It's wrong. And what that's they, what snobby. They, what, yeah, what are they like food bloggers or something? God, when you yeah, you're gonna just show up for restaurant week. And the funniest thing is sometimes is that the waiters are mean to you, even though the waiters like, you know, in a outside sense don't even make a fraction of what you make, but then they're treating you bad because they're trying to protect the territory and keep the vibe. Like we said, we don't know if it's 100% true or not because we didn't go through it at this exact spot. Andrew, what are the options? Because it seems a little naive in my opinion to step into the situation and not expect any sort of different treatment. I would say black and Latino people would definitely be like, oh yeah, I could have predicted that. Yeah, and here are the options, guys. Number one, you cannot go there. You have the freedom to. Number two, you can go to other Asian establishments, you know, if you're Asian, so you can feel like that you're gonna be treated equal or better, you know? That's why a lot of people go to Omakase's. Right, you're saying that's like the Asian country club versus getting treated as a second class citizen at the white country club. They have nice, expensive Asian restaurants. And number three, uh, you can call them out on social media afterwards, start this whole Yelp storm. Obviously, they've locked their Yelp page, so you can't leave any more negative comments. And, or in person, you can let the manager know and talk to them in person, which is something that I would do and have done in the past. And I felt like, you know, there's just different ways of going about it. Everybody can fight racism their own way, but let us know in the comments down below what you would do. Story number three coming out of the Asian American community and or straight off Reddit. It's basically talking about how some Asian Americans, specifically Chinese Americans, want to go back to using their motherland name that has a much deeper, cooler, poetic meaning than their just given basic American name. David, as Asian Americans who have very, very, very common and regular English names, our birth names. Andrew, Dave, Davey, Davey, Andy, right? Not, not very cool, very punchable names. Yes, I agree. But David, we also have very poetic, deep, cool Chinese names. Right, Di Wen, Di Xiong. One uh, means to create literature, one means to be a create warrior literature. Cultural warrior. That's my name. Masculine cultural warrior. I would like to have that as my name instead of Andy. I'm just kidding. I don't know. But I think, David, if you use your Chinese name or you want to use your translation of your Chinese name, obviously it comes with some pressure. Yeah. For example, this girl's name was Jenny and she wanted to go as Shi Lei or Xiao Lei, which is like Little Thunder. I think you could do it. It's 2022. It's more trendy now. Daisy people have been doing it for a while because obviously for religious reasons, they're very proud as they should be. And I just think that for uh, Chinese Americans to do it or any other Asian Americans to do it, I think it's more possible now than it ever has been, but you got to live up to it because if you are telling people to call you Little Thunder, you might want to have come through bold. You can't be like, yeah, my name's Shile. It means Little Thunder. And shout out to all the recent immigrants who come here and get to choose their English name and choose some very uncommon word like galaxy, rainbow, or shadow. Hey, it always does make for a good uh, talking point. Andrew, the fourth piece of Asian news, Andrew. Elon Musk has taken over Twitter and he is causing a ruckus. He's switching this up. He's switching that up. He's changing this and then taking it back. He's going ham. I mean, he fired 50% of Twitter's employees overall and it turned out he fired 90% of the team in India. Long story short, Andrew, and I will say I'm biased or I'm not trying not to be biased as a Tesla shareholder that is not happy with what he's doing to the stock. It is difficult, very, very difficult difficult based on track record to bet against Elon. 
If you look at what he did with PayPal, what he did with SpaceX, what he did with Tesla. Now, I get it. This is like a field that is not his forte. Mm -hmm. And he has a tendency to like pop off real crazy at all the other celebrities. But I don't know, man. He got it. Twitter ain't a rocket ship, though. Twitter ain't a rocket ship, man. I don't think this is really going to work out. I think maybe Twitter is more profitable on a certain end, but I think less people use it. And I think all the disgruntled India employees, they start their own thing like Twindia or something. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to rival Twitter. Hey, That's what I think. Andrew, Elon's roommates in college were Asian. Yeah. So were the CEOs of Twitter that he fired. Point number five, Andrew, despite the discrimination lawsuit against Harvard University, the freshman class is about 25% Asian. However, Andrew, a lot of people are saying based off the raw stats of who should get into Harvard, it should be around 40 to 42% Asian. And one NYU professor even said, and he's white by the way, that it could be up to 70% Asian if they were not down ramping the volume of Asians at Harvard. Oh my God. Can you imagine that? If Harvard was 70% Asian, you might as well just move that school to Asia. Well, Andrew, can't both be true? Can't there be a record amount of Asians in the freshman class and it still be way underrepresented for what it should be statistically? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, think about it. Harvard's in the middle of a discrimination lawsuit right now. So they're probably like, hey, uh, hey, hey, what's a record breaking number for us? 26.7? All right, let's boost it to that. Oh, it should be 42%. But no, 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 no. We got some time. It'll, it'll buy some time. So maybe the next year in 2024, we'll boost it up to 27.5%. To, to and then we'll just keep going up little by little, guys. No one will ever know. By the way, guys, the discrimination portion comes from Asians almost categorically always ranking way lower on the personality portion of the one-on-one -on -one interview. Andrew, it is entirely possible based off stereotypes that the Asian students slightly seem more like uh, introverted, right? Because that's yeah. the culture. And I could totally see the legacy kids from old money who's like great grandfathers went to Harvard as well, having bigger personalities. However, I could see these kids also being privileged D-bags. So, I mean, are they getting docked on that? Well, I think a lot of white kids are trained for the personality test. <laughs> and then a lot of Asian students are trained for the hardcore uh, test scores. But the weird thing about these personality tests is it's supposed to rate your courage and integrity so then, are they saying that Asians have less courage and integrity? How do you know? This is very subjective here. Well, um, the truth is we just make it a cool thing. We just make it about being cool, but we just say courage. Andrew, last but not least, number six, Andrew. Somebody who looks like our uncle, or at least the closest thing I've ever seen to a relative in Hong Kong, and almost became the senator of Rhode Island. Guys. Alan Fung. That's crazy. He looks like our uncle Melvin. No, literally. Uh, not only does he look like our uncle, but he actually has the same character last name, not just the same spelling, same character last name as us. Uh, it's the same fun, guys. I don't know anything about his politics. I am not endorsing him at all. Anyways, he lost either way. But uh, yeah, I guess it was funny to see that happen. Yeah, he was kind of running in a way. I'm not saying that he fully was running the Bobby Jindal plan. But, you know, Bobby Jindal got the Indian wife, but he got the white wife, yeah, you know, yeah. at the white constituency. It is Rhode Island, after all. Like I said, I'm not supporting either side or going against I mean, either I, side. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I think Rhode Island spoke, but if the people are wrong, I don't really care about the future of Rhode Island. <laughs> Um, it's not my concern is what I mean. It, it was cool to see, I guess, something surprising. I was like, man, I, you got even got closer than I ever would have thought. Hey, guys, Fung is not the most common last name, so I think we just have to acknowledge it. Uh, he lost, but uh, I don't know. I mean, better luck next time. David, what can we learn from him? His He ran as a Fung. What if, what if we were going to run for office, huh? What, how, how would we, how could we take, what would we take away? Oh, man. Not look like our uncle. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I guess there's a chance. Hey, he didn't lose by that much, right? I don't know, like 5%. Yeah, you know, I don't really know his politics, but uh, good for the fungs. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. We're going to be doing one of these every week from now on. So make sure you let us know in the comments section below or email us some new stories that you want to see us cover. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.